Your boy Warren B. Arthur, Pim God, what your mama should have told you. And I'm here with my girl Bella Bliss. We're about to chop up some game with respect to my latest audiobook, The Whole Art of Manipulation. So um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions, you know what I'm saying, and you can embellish. Um, in lieu of this Valentine's Day bullshit getting ready to come up, what is your perspective on men? who start out potential relationships with women or you on the trick end. Like guys that's trying to flaunt their money, want to take you out, buy you stuff. Now, of course, that's, you know, something that would be um, a nice gesture. But in terms of your respect for a dude like that, what do you, what's your deepest sentiments as far as that? I would say that, um, in my opinion, that you have to start out on a level where you can have a place to go up from. Mm. So if you automatically come out of the gate, you know, and you're flaunting everything you have and buying over the top expensive uh, presents and right. bags and shoes for the for the girl or the woman, the person, whomever, then where what can you go up from from there so if you're already starting at you know lexus and range rovers whatever, whatever. and louis vuittons and gucci's and right. chanel's yeah uh you have to keep at that level you do have to keep because at that once you start or begin an expectation or maybe you don't intend that to be an expectation but once you start on that path, that's true. You've kind of started the trend of that dynamic with that other person. Right. And so in their mind, they're like, well, shoot, right off the break, he's giving me Gucci and Chanel and whatever. So obviously he's got to like that. So mm -hmm. that's just how he gets down. That's how he gets down. And maybe she's not trying to be an actual gold digger. Right. Maybe she's actually a nice girl. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. not trying to put any game on you. And you decided on your own accord yeah. to go ahead and press the gas pedal and go full speed ahead. Right. As opposed to my my dynamic, I prefer is the um, what's the most valuable thing that somebody has to give to you? Mm -hmm. Their time and their attention. There you go. There you. Did you hear that? We talk about that all the time in the manosphere. Your light is more important than the pussy. And yes, I said that right in front of Bella Bliss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so that's what's up, good, okay. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I can always tell, or I feel like most of us can tell right away uh, yes. through our engagements with other people, how yeah. high we fall in their priority list mm -hmm. of their things they're, they're juggling in their orbit. True. Now, of course, we all have jobs we have to juggle. We all have responsibilities. We all have, you know, financial responsibilities, family obligations, all these. Like, that's the same for everyone. Right. So someone constantly telling you they can't hang out or spend time with you because of those obligations, to me, that's a, that's a sign that someone is saying to you, well, I do value you in my world, but you're so far on the outer orbits that I really can't give you any of the time and attention that you actually need to develop any sort of meaningful dynamic communication right. or a bond right so that's where you have to kind of determine uh with yourself knowing how you can handle things We're like am i cool being like an outer orbit person knowing that this person has has uh they're a boss they're an alpha right. they are wheeling and dealing all day right. they're schmoozing at night right. they're hitting the gym true, true, they're true, dealing true, with true, all true. this so if, if I am in his orbit and he's giving me that time, I do have to make uh, that meaningful. Right. But then you also do have to pay attention to the other signals too to say, okay, well, where do you fall in that orbit of the person? True. So if you are getting that time and attention, and even if it's not a lot, but you know the person has such a life schedule or demand that right. it's so hectic that even if they can only give you an hour or two mm -hmm. or a few hours or you go out to dinner and a movie, keep it simple, or things right. like that, you should know then, as a person dealing with a high level, high, um, high caliber type of person, that that is just as meaningful and valuable as getting a $1,200 pair of shoes. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so that was a whole lot right in there. I mean, if we stop right there, that, that's, 
could do a whole audio Happy Valentine's. Book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good game. That's good game. Okay, so in my latest audiobook, Whole Art of Manipulation, I talk about how most men in society are cultivated to automatically put women on a pedestal, right? Mm-hmm. So as a woman who has dealt with, you know, men and what have you, dating and all of that stuff, um, have you grown used to men seeing themselves as less than you? Is it something that you kind of come to expect? Do And do you take advantage of the fact that most men are cultivated to automatically just kind of put women on a higher pedestal? Or are you more attracted to men who are more indifferent? I don't know. So, I'm asking you. Well, for me, I... Um... I think there's a few kind of thoughts in this realm. Of mm-hmm. course, I think as, you know, humans, we have desires yeah. and we need to have sexual gratification and fulfillment. Of course. We need to have our desires and our fantasies. Um, and that's definitely a part of a whole life situation that makes right. you a healthy human being. Right. So I understand on a biological, physiological level, we all must do it <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> but there's the healthy way about it and the unhealthy way yeah. so if you are a, a man who in my opinion is sli- is sli- slightly unhealthy to put it on the pedestal mm. because that does put you in a position of being less powerful right when you like not that you shouldn't treat a woman like a queen right right but there's a difference between having high standards for yourself and your mate and putting that woman as like the queen of your orbit in the sense that you take care of her like uh, spiritually, you know, financially, you have a secure existence for her, right? right. You know that she, she knows you're her number one, vice versa. Mm-hmm. You're there to bring each other up, that whole thing. Right. So I feel that if you are a, um, a man that is already operating on a higher level, right. then you are going to forsake the pussy, right? Mm. Or sex yeah. to do your work and what you're doing because you're driven. There you go. So for myself, I personally don't really like getting involved with anyone that I feel that I can just jerk around with my vagina mm. because that's too easy for me and that's not fun. Right. You know, like uh, to me, it's a challenge somewhat to be like, okay, I am maybe I'm not on the same level as the man because right. he's, you know, out running corporations doing and doing whatever he's doing. Yeah. But on an intellectual uh, stamina, as a life partner, as a built up person, I am on the same level. Right. So in that situation, it'd be more so that they're not valu- valuing what's between my legs, but they'll be valuing me as like a potential valuable partner right. with what they're trying to do for their, for their life goals. Okay. So that you can put that to the side and you don't need to chase it all the time. Right. Because then you just look yeah, thirsty. And exactly. Girls that look at you and think you're thirsty, then guess what? We're just going to keep spilling our cup again and again and telling you to go bring me another one. Yep. Oh, whoops. Oh, my glass spilled over. Oh, can right. you go get me another one, boo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Mm-hmm. And then she looks at a girlfriend who gives you like that look. And you know the look like, got him. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, yeah, that's a good game right there. And y'all know that because we talk about that all the time. And I've been harping, as you know, forever. Well, not forever, for a long time about pulling back on the sex aspect. Because you increase your value. Otherwise, you're a fuck boy. She could just call you for some dick. You're a fuck boy. That's not somebody that she even has to really respect. Well, and you don't. You don't. And and if you're the girl that's the fuck girl or the side bitch or whatever, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And we can't uh, fool ourselves out here in this world to be like, okay, I started out as like a fuck bitch or a fuck boy. And I'm a cultivate that. And now I'm going to spin that and turn that into a real relationship. There's not. There's there's categories of people and categories of relationships. Mm Mm-hmm. So, hey, yeah, fine. You might have a stable, 
Sure. I say I have, I've had stables of a few. So you right. have your top. Right. You know, the person you actually go out and spend time, quality time with, right. go to dinner with. Sure. Have things in common with and whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you have like your backup if you're having your stable. They're cool and they'll go out with you and you, you know, whatever. That's right. But then after you get to your third or your fourth, what are they there for? They're only there for when the one and the two aren't taking you out, but you still need to get some. Right. But you don't want to like mess with the good thing that you have going on with your number one and your number two. Exactly, exactly. Girls play that game and guys play that game. Right. And until That's someone true. else realizes like, hey, like, I don't want to be that person or okay that's cool I am that person and I'm I'm totally okay with that right because there are situations where you'd be like you know what that's cool right we're just fuck buddies right that's all we need to do yeah like you don't need to ask me about my day right I don't need to know what's happening in your life I don't want the good morning boo or the hey all bae that. or all any that of stuff. that stuff it's about like we're taking care of business right now right because <laughs> it's good for us it is what it is <laughs> you know like it is what it is yeah okay a lot in that right there. A lot in that. A whole nother audio book in that one. Um, women often lie about what they say that they want in a man. In your honest opinion, what do women really want? Um, or do they even really know? Because they say that they want this. Mm -hmm. And it's always this cotton candy hallmark card mm -hmm. bullshit right right and they all have to say it mm -hmm. especially if there's an audience right but when you look at what they actually choose i judge a woman by her dude the opposite so if i look at your dude and he whack mm -hmm. i'm gonna think that you whack because right. you're taking in whack ass energy you know what i'm saying exactly. i say choose a pimp today you know exactly. what I'm but that's a whole nother <laughs> exactly. subject but the whole thing is what do they really want because there's the guy that's oftentimes indifferent to them not always truly emotionally available and a lot of times women are actually attached to that mm -hmm. even if someone in their family like their dad where they should have gotten uh, that um assurance from mm -hmm. if he was emotionally unavailable a lot of times a woman have a propensity to be attracted to emotionally unavailable right. men so i just think there's an oxymoron in what women say they want and what the fuck they end up with well i think that's true be like you say they're I think there's the what you really want to say and mm -hmm. then there's like what society says that you should say. Yeah. Right? So like you say, it's like the cotton candy, like Hallmark. It's what I call the Hallmark, Hallmark Channel yes. kind of yes. description. Yes. I want a man who can provide for me and is charming and he like opens the door for me and right. he's a good father mm -hmm. and he's a good dad, you know. Right. and. He just takes care of me and loves me and treats me like a queen and blood of that. Right. That's what we say. What did you say? That's what we say. But the reality is, I think it's a mix of what we say that we want and what we think that we want. And then there's that place in the middle because we all live in reality. Right. So we all want like the over the top, like um, give me like fireworks when we kiss moments and ah. like rubbing your hand through my hair when we kiss and looking lovingly into each other's eyes exactly. and like darling right. I love you right honey can I bring you a drink right. welcome home here's your dinner you know like yeah. in our mind we want that. that we want like a leave it to beaver cleaver kind of like the man takes care of yeah. us and whatever but now we live in 2020 yeah so now bitches have jobs bitches need to be the man bitches need to be the woman mm -hmm. bitches need to do whatever right 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 so it's no wonder we are also confused what we want mm. because we are giving mixed messages around. You see a Disney Disney movie and you're supposed to be a princess and have happily ever after. Right. Then you turn on the Lifetime channel and some dude's taking a woman out and now she has to beat some ass and be a vigilante badass bitch. Mm -hmm. Then you turn on like daytime soaps and you have your women lamenting about their um, their husband and their lover and their love child. That's Absolutely. But, you know, so no, that's real. We have all these mixed messages about who, what, why, where, when. Mm -hmm. And what it really boils down to is that 
what can you stand to be around all the time mm. and what is the counterbalance to you as your own person mm. so for like myself i can be obviously you know very high energy right very much like on and doing like crazy things right. but i'm also a virgo so i'm very ocd yes. yeah i'm very neat by nature by nature so i need to have a person that would be understanding of that but also don't put up with some shit if i'm doing too much yeah. but then still does respect me yeah like a nice woman or queen that i should be because i'm his woman right but then at the same time be like mm, you look good in a suit honey but let's go in the bedroom and get down right after we go out to the gala or, yeah. you know, what? Yes, yes. So it's like this whole mishmash of stuff. Yeah. When you get finished wading through, you can't see the bottom. Now it's muddy. Yeah. So the muddiness now is like in their mind too, because what you, what you say that you want yeah. doesn't come in the package mm. that you want it to come in. Mm. So yeah. I can, for example, go on a dating app and if I were to close my eyes and not look at any of the pictures and I just had someone beside me sitting there reading me all the things that the people yeah. say, mm -hmm. I would probably pick about a hundred people that I'd be like, oh, we might have something in common. Let's further chat. Let's do this, right? But once we put our sight back into it <laughs> and we know what we need as a person to be physically stimulated, now all of a sudden my choices have dwindled down. So, okay, I'm sorry. What happens when a woman is not attracted so much to a dude. 